Shalom Havarim, James Trim here, and today I want to talk to you about Paul's opponent in the book of Galatians. <clears throat> uh, was Paul's opponent in the book of Galatians uh, and the, uh, the doctrine that Paul was debating against in the book of Galatians uh, the Talmud and rabbinic Judaism as some are now proclaiming or was it Essene Judaism and the Qumran sect what's the truth and what uh, does Galatians really mean we'll get with that in just a minute but I need to ask people to please donate to support this work in fact I, I just learned from my wife who keeps track with the, the finances and, and money and whatnot that we are $491 in the negative as far as clearing the bills through our account Monday night. Uh, I'm recording this on Sunday, so uh, uh, when, the, uh, when the bank business closes by the end of the day tomorrow, we need to have raised $491 to uh to keep the account from going into the negative you can donate by clicking on the donate link in the video description uh where you can donate by paypal by uh zelle or by gofundme uh the gofundme won't get to us right away uh so uh, if you if you're uh, wanting to contribute to us to help us out of this immediate bind we're in uh, uh, PayPal and sell are best so you can click on the donate link in the video description or you can send donations by PayPal to donations at WNAE.org also please like our videos like this video and uh, uh, subscribe to our channel and click that uh, little bell so you'll get uh, recommend uh, you'll get uh, notifications when new videos come out let us think what you know let us know what you think uh, let us think what you know let us know what you think in the video comments in the comments section participate in the discussions in the comments section all these things are things that the YouTube algorithm looks at to decide which videos to recommend to new viewers and obviously we want that to happen also please uh, share these videos on social media on on your Facebook page on relevant Facebook groups uh, on the social network formerly known as Twitter uh, and any other uh, uh, social networks social uh, 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 media platforms in which you participate okay um, so I got a meme, a Facebook meme recently, and sometimes I get these Facebook memes that, uh, you know, I'll maybe respond to them, but I really feel like uh, a real more thorough response needs to be made in the form of one of my videos. And this, uh, uh, like so often is the case, this video has a set of, <coughs> excuse, <coughs> excuse me, This video has a set of PDF handouts that you can download and the link to that set of PDF downloads is in the video description. Uh, the first page of the handouts uh, is in fact the meme that I saw on Facebook and the meme I put up above it false popular meme uh, expresses a idea that has been circulating for over 20 years now uh, that I believe I could be wrong but I believe originates from Nehemiah Gordon or Nehemiah Gordon uh, who was a uh, who is a um, uh, a Kyrite not a believer in Yeshua doesn't even believe in the book of Galatians as uh, any kind of real uh, value I mean isn't a believer in Yeshua so but uh, he has read into uh, uh, the New Testament uh, car right theology that didn't exist at the time and we've done some videos about some of that in the past um, this particular meme says how to understand law in Galatians chapter 3 
And then it says, what in the world is Paul talking about? And as you can see, the point of this meme is um, uh, that the when the word law appears in Galatians without a, in the Greek of Galatians without a definite article, that it's actually talking about the Torah. And when it appears with a definite article, for some reason, it must then be talking about the Talmud. And so it says Talmud, man-made Pharisees rules and regulations. And it says, um, number one, point one, in Greek, all types of law use the same word nomos, um, uh, law. And then it says point two, uh, God's law, the Torah, is predicated by the Greek article the. And then it says three, false Pharisee slash Judaism Talmud man-made law does not have the Greek article in front of it, but translators made mistakes and typed in the in front of law nomos and did not italicize it to show it so that the reader would know that it does not exist. This is why for centuries Paul's writings seem confusing as, as, as sometimes Paul seems to speak highly of God's law and other times Paul appears to criticize God's law but in reality once you know the Greek you realize Paul never speaks against Torah God's law. In fact, Acts 21 24 shows us that Paul lives by God's law just like Messiah. So I agree with part of what this is saying. That part is that Paul is never speaking against the actual Torah. Uh, Paul regards the Torah highly. Paul was Torah observant. He was a ringleader of the Nazarenes. The Nazarenes were Torah observant believers in Yeshua as the Messiah. And we've done all kinds of videos on Paul and Torah and how Paul is misunderstood in the past. This is not one of them. Not that this video isn't one of them. I mean, this meme is not correctly explaining one of them. There are a number of fundamental problems with this meme. The first problem with this meme is that Paul didn't write in Greek. Paul wrote in Hebrew and in Aramaic. The New Testament was not written in Greek. It was written in Hebrew and Aramaic. And we've done many videos on that topic before. So all we could really be talking about here is the Greek translation and how the Greek translator used the definite article. Um, in Aramaic, the de definite article is actually uh, very weak. There is almost no definite article in the Aramaic language, uh, certainly in Syriac. It's, it's, very, it's very weak. It's a suffix at the end of the word, and it came to really not really be much of a definite article at all. Okay, um, so that's number one. Number two, uh, uh, the Talmud, this specifically says Talmud in big letters and points to all the, uh, looks at uh, uh, Galatians 3, uh, several passages from Galatians 3 and Romans 7, uh, and uh, points to uh, different examples of the word law or nomos in the Greek versions of these books that appear with the definite article and says Talmud, that that means Talmud, the Talmud. Now that's quite interesting because the Talmud didn't exist in the first century. It wasn't composed until about 400 years after Paul. So unless Paul had a time machine, Paul could not possibly have been referring to the Talmud when he uses the phrase the law versus law. And he could not be possibly be using the word um, uh, the law or the phrase the law to refer to the Talmud. Now, you'll also notice here where it says Galatians 3, 2 uh, in this handout, the phrase is the works of the law. And we see again, worketh of the law in Galatians 3, 5. And in Galatians 3, 10, again, works of the law. Um, and in Galatians, uh, uh, so 
this is uh, uh, goes back to a theory or an explanation that goes back to Nehemiah Gordon that says that when Galatians uses the phrase works of the law and the phrase under the law, but we'll talk about the phrase works of the law, that it is referring to the oral law. Um, this was popularized almost 20 years ago now by this book by my old friend Avi ben Mordecai in his commentary on Galatians. And he says here in chapter 3, uh, in his commentary on chapter 3, verse 10, he focuses on this and he says that he got this idea from studying with ne Nehemiah Gordon. Page uh, 250 and 251. Um, here's the problem. Um, he wrote this book in 2005. And when he wrote the book, I, I told him I thought he was wrong. But here's the thing. I've known Avi for many, many years. And uh, you know, I love Avi. Uh, great guy. But here I think he's dead wrong. When he wrote his book, Messiah, Volume 1, in 19, let's see, what's the, the date in here, 1997. So he wrote this, this is the first edition that he wrote in 1997. And in this, he explains that works of the law, the phrase works of the law, he has an a, 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 explanation in chapter 7 on page 289 of the first edition if you can get a first edition of this book he explains that uh in, in Galatians 3 10 the words work the phrase works of the law the word of in the greek is ek and it means out of and away from so that works of the law means works out of and away from the law now avi wrote this book uh before i met him not long before I met him, but before I met him. And he gave me a copy of the book. And I read it, and I came back to him and said, Avi, Galatians wasn't written in Greek. It was written in Aramaic. And I don't think that's what it means. Let me tell you what I think it means. I said the, wor the phrase works of the law uh, is a, um, a, a technical theological term that Paul uses, and under the law also, they're both technical theological terms that Paul uses. And he uses them to describe um, a false theological concept that his opponent holds that he does not hold to. Um, and uh, 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 when Paul criticizes works of the law, he's not talking about the works of the law, the actual Torah, because... Um, he's using it the same way he's using it uh, the same way that a Baptist minister might be doing a sermon and criticizing the baptisms of the Latter-day Saints well we all know that the term Latter-day Saints is a, a technical theological term used by the Mormons now a person that didn't know any better might think that this Baptist preacher was opposed to baptisms in general but or opposed to Latter-day Saints and you might say what has he got to you know against Saints in the latter days well but if you know that it's a technical theological uh, term used by his opponent then you know that that's not how you should understand it it's the same thing with Paul when you understand that works of the law was a technical theological term used by his opponents and under the law is also a technical theological term used by his opponents then you understand he's not talking about the Torah itself. And I began teaching this in the 1980s. Um, and then when the Dead Sea Scrolls were released in the uh, late 1990s, early 2000s, I guess 1996 or so, um, <clears throat> a document was released in them. It was, for example, in this book, a uh, very thoroughly used copy that I have, the Dead Sea Scrolls, a new translation by Weiss, Abeg, and Cook. Um, and this is, uh, I believe, a first edition from 1996. And uh, uh, if you look on page 300, uh, let's see here. 
on page 358, you see that there's a document here called 4QMMT, and 4QMMT is literally translates some of the works of the law. And the authors point out it's very close connection to Galatians and Romans. So let's turn to the next page of our, turn, our, our handout. It's titled Truth up at the top. Um, and it's not saying that 4QMMT is truth. It's simply this is the truth about Galatians. And um, quoting from 4QMMT, it says, now we have written to you some of the works of the law, those which we determined would be beneficial for you, dot, dot, dot. And then it says, and it will be reckoned to you as righteousness in that you have done what is right and good before him. So what 4QMMT is, is a list of purity regulations about which the Essenes believed that the Pharisees had become, had uh, uh, halacha that was too weak, that, did, that therefore resulted in them violating these purity regulations. And the Essenes believed that if you could just keep the purity regulations uh, well enough that they would, you could uh, purify your way to salvation. Um, and so we have here in the handout, in parallel, right next to each other, 4QMMT says, now we have written to you some of the works of the law, those which we uh, determined would be beneficial for you, and it will be reckoned to you as righteousness, in that you have done what is right and good before him. And this is an exact inverse parallel to Galatians chapter 2, verse 16, in chapter 3, verse 6, where we read, Knowing that a man is not justified by works of the law, but by faith in Yeshua the Messiah, even we have believed in Yeshua the Messiah, that we might be justified by the faith of the Messiah, and not by works of the law. For by works of the law shall no flesh be justified, even as Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him for righteousness." You can see in Galatians 2.16 and 3.6 that Paul is countering the exact language of 4QMMT, uh, uh, section C, lines 26B through 31. So this heretical doctrine that was laid out in 4QMMT is based on, uh, in 4QMMT, MMT is actually initials for the Hebrew phrase, some of the works of the Torah. Um, and so 4 MMT is based on 24 purity regulations, which it lays out, about which the Essenes held a stricter halacha than their Pharisaic counterparts. And in fact, in many cases, you can compare what the Mishnah says to what 4QMMT says and see the difference. Um, apparently, Paul's opponent takes righteousness or justification in this passage of MMT to mean salvation. Paul, however, argues that it is faith in Messiah and not these works of the law, these purity regulations by which we are saved. But what's very important to realize here is that these purity regulations are not the oral law. They're not Pharisaic. They're definitely not the Talmud, which wasn't even written yet. They are 24 regulations of ritual purity about which the Essenes uh, believed that the Pharisees were in, in error, uh, in error and were errant. In other words, they thought the Pharisees were wrong and that as a result of the Pharisees being wrong about these 24 points of purity regulations, they were impure and the person would keep these purity regulations would receive justification and effectively salvation. Now, what's interesting is that in all of rabbinic literature, <clears throat> in fact, let me show you something. I have here an index of all the places 
in which the phrase works of the law appears in the Talmud and in the Midrashim, in the Zohar, and all the rabbinic literature. Here, you can see that. All the pages are blank. <laughs> That's right, nowhere. Nowhere in all of the volumes of rabbinic literature. And by all the volumes, I mean, you see those brown books back there? Here, I'll just point, I'll point at them. This, volumes of books here. That's the Talmud. It's a, it, an entire encyclopedia, uh, effectively. It's the size of an encyclopedia. That's the Mishnah right there, okay? There's the Zohar in all the rabbinic literature. The phrase works of the law is never used. So where does Nehemiah Gordon, Avi ben Mordecai, and this Facebook meme get the idea that works of the law somehow refers to the Talmud, which wasn't even written yet, or to at least Nehemiah Gordon's a little more conservative about it, the oral law, or Avi ben Mordecai. Where does this book get that idea? Out of thin air. There's absolutely zero basis for it. And what's really interesting is that Avi, sadly, in um, the third edition, that's, this is the third edition of his book, in the first edition of Messiah Volume 1, he said works of the law means out of and away from the law. And then in, I don't know about uh, the second edition, it might have been changed by then, but in the third edition, he's, he agrees with what I showed him. I showed him about this. In fact, I sat down with him in his office, and while I was with him in his office, he got on the internet and ordered a copy of this book so he could, go, so he could see it for himself. I remember uh, Avi at the time lived in this wonderful uh, uh, three-story log cabin. I say three-story, two stories and a, and a completed basement out in the Rocky Mountains. It was beautiful. And uh, I mean, it was snowing out there. It was winter, and uh, uh, a, a, a UPS truck came to deliver the book uh, while I was still there staying with him, and and it was quite a trick for them to, to get in and deliver. Um, but uh, uh, after that, Avi uh, agreed with me, and he published that explanation here in the, uh, the third edition of Messiah, Volume One. And you can find it on uh, page 290. Here it is. Here's Messiah Volume 1, Avi ben Mordecai. Here it is. Whole explanation there. You can see where it is. And, um, and he published this in 2000 and... Yeah, 2000. In the year 2000. This... He, uh, he published the, the revision. Then when he publishes the Galatians book here, and he goes into Galatians chapter 3, verse 10, and, and really all through the book of Galatians, and completely ignores what he said in Messiah volume 1, uh, uh, the third edition, does not explain for uh, at all why suddenly that's wrong, even though it was right, and substitutes the idea that it's the oral law uh, and effectively the Talmud that is being referred to as works of the law in the book of Galatians. And that Paul's opponent in the book of Galatians is the uh, 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 Pharisaic Judaism and the uh, oral law. You'd think he would at least explain why in Messiah volume one, uh, the third edition, that he said it was four, had to do with 4QMMT uh, and the Essenes and their purity regulations, and that he then, you know, that he was wrong, and that uh, this is why he was wrong, and that uh, uh, now there's a better, newer understanding that it's uh, the uh, oral law and the, and the Pharisees, which is exactly, as I'll show you, the opposite of what it is. Um, why doesn't he do that? Because he doesn't, there was no evidence to give. I, I still to this day have no comprehension of why he threw away the truth and published this. I love Avi to death, but I, I have no idea why he threw away the truth 
and published this theory, which has now plagued the movement for 20 years unnecessarily uh, uh, with a false understanding of Galatians, when a very good, correct understanding of Galatians is available. Uh, it's available in Messiah Volume 1, the third edition. It's available in my writings. It's available here in this video. It's available in a previous video that we did on works of the law and another previous video we did on under the law. Uh, and uh, it's very unfortunate. So I repeat, there is absolutely no basis for the claims in the meme that I pre uh, mentioned that's in the uh, 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 first page of our handout or the claims of this book. There's absolutely no basis for arguing that Paul's opponent are Pharisees and that he's railing against, when he rails against works of the law, he's railing against the Talmud or the oral law. In fact, Paul himself was a Pharisee and says in the present tense, I am a Pharisee in Acts 23, 6. Paul was a Pharisee. Uh, he wasn't railing against Phariseeism. He was railing against Essenism and the uh, works of the law doctrine that is laid out in 4QMMT. And I challenge anyone to give any really good substantial reason and evidence that Paul can't be talking about the only document in Jewish literature outside of Paul's writings that uses the phrase works of the law anciently in the Dead Sea Scrolls 4QMMT that uses inverse, almost parallel inverse language. In other words, as we showed, when you compare 4QMMT to Galatians 2.16 and Galatians 3.6, they're using exactly the same terminology inverse and Paul is saying this is wrong. In other words, um, 4QMMT says, now we have written to you some of the works of the law, those which we determined would be beneficial for you, and it will be reckoned to you as righteousness. Whereas Paul says that the works of the law, uh, by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified, even as Avraham believed Elohim, and it was counted to him for righteousness. In other words, faith in Messiah is counted as righteousness, not works of the law. Uh, the parallel there is so obvious and so clear and from the same time period, roughly, the Second Temple era. Um, uh, nobody has ever given any rational explanation as to why that should be discarded. And this theory that it's talking about the Talmud or oral law uh, and attacking Phariseeism with absolutely no basis, not one place in rabbinic literature, where the phrase works of the law even appears, should be adopted in its place, except for a hatred for rabbinic Judaism. And this is not a surprise for this to come from uh, Nehemiah Gordon, who's a Kairite. And I have to wonder why everybody should be concerned what Nehemiah Gordon thinks about Galatians when Nehemiah Gordon doesn't even believe Yeshua is the Messiah. His opinion of Galatians should at least be of limited value since he believes that the book itself is spurious, if you will. Okay, I know this has been something of a rant, but it is uh, it really eats me up that people attack the oral law without any understanding, and then they put out memes like the one I showed you, or they uh, you know promote this book without any academic understanding of what works of the law actually means, uh, because. Um, there may be some good information in this book, but I have to say the overall theory of this book is garbage. Um, there's just nothing to it. And it could have been a great book. It could have been a great book if this book centered on the idea that Paul's opponent was, uh, were, uh, was the Essenes. Because here's what Galatians is all really about. Uh, I believe, and I think that there's a good basis for this idea that Paul wrote a, a letter to the Galatians, very similar to our book of Romans. I think the book of Romans is the copy of 
a text that Paul sent to various congregations as a sort of an introductory theological text. And we just have the copy that he sent to the Romans. But I think he sent a copy of that also to Galatia. You can see in the book of Galatians that he refers back, apparently, to things that are in Romans, but just briefly as if the reader should already know the material because it was in Romans. Um, so I think that Paul sent to the Galatians a copy of what we call the book of Romans. That someone troubling them, an Essene uh, 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 person with an Essene background, uh, perhaps uh, the teacher of righteousness, I don't know, the so-called teacher of righteousness, the, the Moritzetic, but I, I, that's probably out of time. But someone with an S, you know, that held to Essene beliefs and Essene halacha sent the Galatians a copy of 4QMMT. And Paul was uh, then made aware by the Galatians that they'd gotten this copy of 4QMMT and Paul then responds by sending Galatians as a response to 4QMMT. In other words, there's a dialogue going on here and you could actually put the documents in order and see that you start with Romans and then 4QMMT comes in as a uh, Essene response to Romans and then Paul responds to 4QMMT in the book of Galatians. So Galatians is a book which is supporting Torah, but it's not criticizing the oral Torah. Paul, and it's not criticizing Phariseeism. Paul was a Pharisee. Paul said, present tense, I am a Pharisee, Acts 23, 6. Paul was criticizing Essenism and 4QMMT, um, and that's very, very clear when we compare 4QMMT to Galatians. And there is no basis to throw that theory away and substitute in its place a baseless claim that Paul is instead criticizing Pharisees in the oral law um, uh, and somehow teaching Karaitism uh, long before it even existed. All right, let me know what you think in the comments. If you think I'm wrong, if you think 4 uh, Paul can't be referring to 4QMMT, then let me know why you think that. If you think Paul must be talking about the oral law and not 4QMMT, uh, he must be talking about Pharisees and not Essenes in Galatians, in his criticism in Galatians, then let me know about that as well. By the way, we did a whole video series going line by line through the book of Galatians. And you can find that in the video uh, in, in the channel history. You can also find a video we did on works of the law and one we did on works uh, on uh, under the law in the video history. All right, one last time I need to invite, ask everybody to please donate to support these videos. Um, we do, uh, I think, unique videos and we do material on a much higher level than a lot of material that is out there. Uh, so I need to ask everybody to please donate to support this work. Also, please like this video, uh, subscribe to our channel, uh, click the notification bell, let us know what you think in the comments, participate in the discussions in the comments, and share these videos with your friends on social media. Shalom, everybody. Until next time.